Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. Today we're going to talk about whether or not it's a good idea to knit when you're sick. Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. I'm here with Knitting Now to help you learn to knit the easy way. We are going to talk today about whether it's a good idea to knit when you're sick. And the question I get a lot is, should I knit when I'm sick? Of course, we shouldn't live our lives by shoulds. <laughs> Should is an interesting word because you're asking someone else to clarify whether or not you need to do something, you can do something, or you want to do something, but actually you need to make that choice for yourself. So let's go through those choices, those questions you can ask yourself about whether or not it's a good idea for you to be knitting when you're sick. And of course, let's talk about what, if you can knit, it is that you want to knit when you're sick. There are things that you might want to avoid knitting and things that it might be a better idea for you to knit when you're not very well. So stay tuned because not only am I going to go through a few of those things, but I'm going to introduce you to a couple more of my videos that can really help you. And you know, when you're not feeling very well and you're wondering whether it's a good idea to knit yet, watching YouTube is a great point. So you could sit here and binge a few of my videos when we get to the end. So first thing is, let's look at those questions. The questions you can ask yourself when you're not feeling very well and you really want to think, maybe I can knit, maybe I can't. So the first thing is, do you have the physical health? And you can actually just look at yourself and say, Am I able to knit? So two things happened to me last year um, where I just was not able to knit. My hands weren't able to hold the needles comfortably and make stitches and continue with the rows. So the first thing happened in May, I cut my finger, I was just cutting something and the secateurs in the garden just slipped and cut my finger instead of the plant. And it actually hurt. I had a bandage on it for about four weeks and it was five weeks before I was able to say, it feels comfortable, I'm not sitting here going, ouch, when I pick up the needles and I want to knit. So that was five weeks when I wasn't able to knit. I could sit there and do other things, I could be creative in other ways, but deciding to not knit was a really good thing. It meant that I wasn't in pain and it meant that probably it healed in five weeks instead of maybe eight. I wasn't making the injury worse. So the second thing that happened was that I had hand, foot and mouth disease in October and that has lasted longer than I expected because the ramifications of that actually just go on for months and months and months. So firstly my hands were blistered, they felt really hot, they were painful and that went on for a couple of weeks. Then all the skin was peeling so that was painful too and now because the virus went into my nail beds so I have cracked nails and they're catching on the wool as well when I'm knitting. So there are days when I can knit and days when I just have to wait until that nail's grown a bit further so it can be smoother. And it's just a case of saying, yes, I can knit and no, I can't knit. But always remember, this too will pass. And there will be other things that you can do that will be creative, that can keep your inspiration going. You can sit here and, and binge YouTube videos about knitting. You can listen to podcasts about knitting. You can read books about knitting. So just keep that information going and look at other ways of using yarn as well because you may not be able to hold knitting needles. Perhaps you can sit there and make some tassels. Perhaps you can make some pom-poms. Think about different ways you can use yarn and recognise that this will pass. Now the other question, it'd be a great idea to ask yourself, is do I have the energy to knit? Energy can just be depleted when, you've, when you're not well. Perhaps you've got a cold, so it just kind of, huh, there's this kind of uh, drag on you whenever you're trying to do something. And you know, picking up the needles just isn't an option. Energy might also be depleted if you've maybe been in hospital and you need a few days of recovery, a few days to kind of just sort out yourself. You need to eat, you need to hydrate, you need to do all sorts of things in your life that probably are more bigger on a priority list than knitting. So get those in place and then knitting can come next. So that's your energy question. The next question is do you have the focus and concentration? Sometimes if you're ill, it just is not something that's clicking. You may have the energy, you may have the physical health, but you don't have the focus. Maybe you're better off 
going for a short walk or doing a bit of gentle yoga and recognize that your focus will come back in a few days time. When you don't have the right focus and concentration, guess what's gonna happen with your knitting? You're more likely to make mistakes. You won't find it easy to follow a pattern. You just do the wrong row at the wrong time. Or you'll go halfway across the row before you realize that your ribbing's got out of step. And it just, it can get really frustrating because then again, you need more focus and concentration to fix that mistake before you carry on. Those are the three questions I want you to ask. Do I have the physical health? Do I have the energy and do I have the focus and concentration to be able to knit? Recognise, this is so important, this too will pass. I have long term health conditions so there have been times when my health has just gone downwards and I've felt like my energy levels, my physical health and my focus and concentration has kind of gone downhill. And I've just had to recognize and know, because it's happened in the past, that this too will pass. When it's happened in the past, it always does pass. And I see that hope and I see that light at the end of the tunnel. It can be difficult, you know, you can want to cry and you go, this isn't fair. But when you kind of get over that feeling, you know that the next thing is coming. The next day will happen. Tomorrow is a new day. Next week is a new week. And it will all pass and it will all get much better. So what shall we knit when we're in recovery phase and when we're feeling better, but not quite well enough to think, I can really pick up my knitting and really focus on it and learn new techniques and get to grips with all these new ideas that I wanted to challenge myself with. Well, you can knit all sorts of things. First of all, I would say, just set aside your current knitting if it is challenging knitting, if it is the kind of thing that you need that extra focus and concentration for and the extra energy for because that kind of thing takes brain power, that takes energy, and if you're using your energy for healing, if you're using for your energy and you're letting yourself rest, then you know you just need to give yourself a break. First of all, pick up something small, uh, some stash yarn, and it's something small that's new, that's maybe a baby beanie, that's maybe a set of coasters, that's a bookmark. It will be new, it will be quick, and you can say, I'll knit this for a couple of days and then maybe I'll feel better to pick up my old knitting. The next thing I would say is how about knitting something simple? Recognize that you know the knit stitch and maybe you can knit moss stitch with your eyes closed. It's a simple technique, it's not a new technique and it's something that you know like the back of your hand. It could easily be a pattern that you've knitted a few times before as well. I might say if I'm not well, I'll knit three hats, they can go in my pile for Christmas gifts. It could be challenging in a way that you're actually going to achieve something by the end of it, but it's not going to challenge you in a way that you need real focus, real concentration, you're learning brand new techniques, and it's going to be really complicated. So you're going to find patterns in a couple of ways. First of all, why don't you ask someone in your life, your partner, your husband, your wife, your friend, your neighbour, to go and get you a magazine, a knitting magazine from the local newsagents, and... It could just be a bit of fun going through it. Sometimes they've even got yarn on the front with the needles that you need to just start knitting something. So it could be great fun. Usually these are quite simple knits if it's a novelty magazine, so it won't be too difficult. It shouldn't be too challenging. Um, the other thing you can do is sit there, just kind of pick a few odd balls out of your yarn stash and watch two videos that I've got to give you some ideas. So the first video I would suggest is watching the one skein knits because if you want to knit something with one ball of yarn, that's where you want to go. Also, because I mentioned knitting something simple that doesn't challenge you too much, how about watching what to knit for beginners? Because that's going to give you lots of ideas. You probably won't even need a pattern for some of these. It's just about putting some stitches on the needle and knitting. It's about practicing the knit stitch when you're a beginner, but if you're not feeling very well, then this is ideal because you don't need a lot of focus, you don't need a lot of concentration, but you will make something, you will create something by the end of a couple of hours or by the end of the week. So there you go, should you knit when you're sick? Well, let's remove the should and let's ask ourselves some questions and then think, figure out if you are well enough to knit, then what it is you can knit can be small and simple and just a break from more challenging knitting. I hope this has been helpful for you and I do hope you're feeling better soon. <laughs> I will see you next week. Bye for now. Happy knitting.